Annie, what's going on with, with your body? You're you're strolling in here. You're telling us that you're you're big. Don't <laughs> no, wait, don't take wait. such joy in that. <laughs> you're telling us that you're As big. And she shoves food in her fat mouth. Tell me the story while I look at you and eat. <laughs> <laughs> okay, because of my cluster headaches. Well, right before my cluster headaches, I hurt my shoulder using Whitney's um, row machine. Whitney Cummings, I have very rich friends. Um, I wanted this row machine really bad. I saw it at uh, Best Buy and I was like, oh, I want this row machine. It's like the Peloton of row machines. Well, you were at Best Buy? This was like three months ago. Why? Something for Todd's computer. Hopefully a Britney Spears CD. I go to Best Buy for my CDs when it's 2005. What do you do? Really? Best Buy? Mm hmm. Not Tower? Because remember in Tower that. Records, you could listen to all, you could preview all of the all of the entire CD before you buy it. That, or you go, you go down to Penny Lane and you get that CD. Like I used to get um, the, the, the Chronic 2. I got it for like two bucks and it was a brand new CD. I used to go in, uh, in Philly, I used to go to South Street to use CD stores. That was fun. That's where that I got sounds my... fun. Green Day. Um, Do you have that time? <laughs> Do you mm-hmm. swallow your food before you talk in the podcast? It's been just... <laughs> I don't. It's like, it, and it's, what is it that you're eating? This is a slim, crunchy peanut butter vegan bar. I don't normally eat these, but I was in a rush today. I don't like what? Eat- Oh, because you don't want to like promote it? No, I, I just, I don't like eating protein bars. That's like... Is the first word on that I've slim? seen this bitch. Yeah. Listen, I've seen this bitch eating bars. I don't know what's going not on. In, not in COVID times, because in COVID times, you can eat all your meals like slowly at home because you're not on the go, go, go. I've never seen her eat anything slowly. <laughs> I don't know what narrative you're trying to spin here. I've said this before on podcast. Esther punches food into her face. <laughs> she smacks it. It's like the biggest handful, like those little hands. It's a real size handful. It's like it's all bubbling out of the hand. Yeah, she double hands it. You know, <laughs> when I go to the movie theaters, I have a strict policy. I'm not sharing popcorn. Do you understand? Get it through your heads now, friends. Is it so you can play with your own penis at the bottom? <laughs> <laughs> no, I just, I don't want your hands in my popcorn, COVID or not COVID. Vaccine or not vaccine, I just want to show. Nobody up. wants this your is- creepy little hands in theirs. Your nasty little <laughs> tiny hands. I, you know what's scary? How much, how often your hand would be in the popcorn? I wouldn't know. <laughs> That's scary to me. I want to be aware of your hands at all times. And in fact, if I do go to the movies, you with pretending you, that people are fighting to share popcorn with you. You listen <laughs> up. You listen up. If I do go to the movies with you and I have to go to the bathroom, I'm taking a picture of my popcorn before I go so that it looks exactly the same when I'm. Back. I'm surprised you wouldn't oh. take your popcorn with you. Oh, I'm taking I don't want your it popcorn. In the bathroom. When you go to the bathroom, I'm taking your popcorn with me to the bathroom, <laughs> and I'm taking a very different picture of it. I, I, You're I can buttering imagine. it up. <laughs> I'm adding a little spice to it. I think Annie's 2021 goal is to hold hands in your popcorn with you. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, I saw, honestly, I saw the, uh, this is the most, one of the most monumental moments of my life. My dad used to pick me, I've told this story before, so maybe you've heard it, but my dad used to pick me up from high school and we would go to this movie theater and watch all the critically acclaimed movies, but we wouldn't know anything about them ahead of time. We would just know that they were the good ones. So my dad would pick me up. And the best part about it was that there was no one in the theater. So it was just like this moment where we're watching this movie by ourselves. We can talk to whatever. He picks me up one day from school and he goes, all right, we're going to go see this movie called Requiem for a Dream. (laughs) And we went and we saw together Requiem for a Dream. We got like a large thing of popcorn. Do you know what happens in this movie? No. There's there's an ass to ass scene you might be very interested in. It's like there's How does that work? Okay, so it's one end of the dildo (laughs) and one girl's butt, the other get end of the dildo in another girl's butt and they go they they gyrate backwards into the dildo. It's let's just say both asses are having a banana break at the same time (laughs) towards each other. Please play the banana break song. (laughs) And it's a Jennifer Connolly doing ass to ass. What? Gen- yeah. Jennifer Connelly? Mm-hmm. From House of Sand from, and Fox? You know what's so funny? From she Labyrinth? thinks she looks like her. She thinks she looks like her. I can always tell when Esther no, thinks she looks I like her. I just someone. loved her performance in, in some movies that I've I, seen. I poked into a, uh, an Esther club once, and Esther was talking about oh, yeah. Rachel Lee Cook. She's like, and she was the most gorgeous girl there ever was. And I'm like, 
Esther looks like the, Esther has the same <laughs> face shape. Like you can tell, like no, that the movie she's all that. They paint her out to be this ugly little hog, and she's gorgeous. I agree. Why are you so triggered by this? Because this you feel is, like this is your life. Because this ruined my childhood. This ruined my life. Uh-huh. I think I'm an ugly fucking piece of dog shit because I have brown hair and I'm short. She not even. She didn't even look you mousy. Are blonde. You're wearing pretty much the same outfit she wore when she was the loser. You are blonde and blue eyes, so you have been green report- eyes. You have been portrayed in media your whole life as a fucking hot shit, uh-huh. and you are you are not like me. Oh you, yeah, I'm like you. You. Yeah. Oh my any- god, she's a model. That's so embarrassing. <laughs> she's obviously like a full blown model. <laughs> no, but she wasn't portrayed in media as beautiful. You were a model, hand model. My hands. You they the- cropped everything out of your body except your. <laughs> were you really a hand model? Esther? Yeah, for American Girl doll catalog and a Pillsbury. Commercial. I'd let you be a, like a model of this part of your face too. I, I like th- this is a hot spot. I wanted to be an actress, but it, things turned into just hand modeling. <laughs> <laughs> Annie, so what happened in the movies? Um, okay, so we go With to the movie. And my dad, but I was just thinking about how we we were looking straight forward, like. Esther, the ass scene might have been the the most family friendly friendly part. <laughs> Shut yeah. up. I, I'm telling you, it might have been the nicest scene in the no, movie. No, truly, she's not exaggerating. It's one of the worst. It was. It's like having a nightmare and a fever at the same time and while watching. Yeah, it's like Ellen Burstein's um, yes. scenes where she um, she's an older lady who becomes very crazed about this one TV show she thinks she's going to be a part of. So every day she's watching. It's like a fever dream. It it's repeats, so- repeats, repeats. She gets more crazed as each day goes. And then there's another scene fun. where a fucking heroin stick turn becomes infected and that just fucked me it's up. just so like there's a scene where like this woman's so fucked up that like like the refrigerator starts shaking mm-hmm. at her like it's just so scary question how would you rank it watching requiem with a dream with your dad Requiem for a dream we how- call it with a dream when my dad's there <laughs> <laughs> how would you rank that against watching pulp fiction with your dad wait re- nothing pulp fiction nothing. is like are you watching serious bambi. yeah are you it fucking, is bambi really uh, she's right it's bambi compared it's, to requiem and both well, not even bambi because bambi is like traumatic as the mom dies which by the way still hurt oh that oh, hurts no. me don't even bring it up don't cry. bring it up change the subject pulp i have fiction. A, i also have a true <laughs> question about that like did they think that we could emotionally as kids handle that scene it's because it was devastating for me, I dreamt about it. I cried about it. They for- always did it. Uh, Lion King and uh, even in Frozen, the parents die, but they die like on a ship. Like you don't really like see it. But these ones, like we know the mom's about to like, they they put suspenseful music. Can we kid, not? Like, we have to. No, change. no, no. Did you guys see AI when you were little? I did. I wasn't that little though. I was, yeah, I know. I think I was, I was like, I think it was a teenager yeah. at that point. <laughs> Probably so was I. Yeah. <laughs> have you ever seen a movie when you weren't little? Oh wait, not possible. <laughs> <laughs> but AI fucked me up when he's like searching for his mom, the little robot boy. Mm-hmm. Like, didn't that mess you guys up? Oh my god. That, that was that was sad. But I think I was old enough to um, kind of um, reconcile with my feelings. At that time, what fucked me up as a child, you like stupid bitch, <laughs> I had like demonic <laughs> dreams about it. Was fucking Charlie and the Chocolate Factory? Why? Really? I think that's not uh, child appropriate at all. It's scary because it's like, do all those kids go die when they all get like sick and stuff? And yeah, I was like, where? What is happening? Can I guess who Esther related to the most in the? <laughs> Daddy, I want another pony. <laughs> Oh my God, it's so good. I would love to see you shooting through like a little tube of chocolate. (laughs) It's so true though. The second I got to the chocolate factory, I'd just be like, see ya. And I'd like jump into the chocolate. (laughs) What are other really traumatic? Oh, very, very impressionable. Two movies that really made an impact on me when I was younger during library hour when we would have to watch movies was Twister. I can't believe you just brought that up. I can't the believe. The best, right? Esther's no. seen three movies. Scariest. Because <laughs> no. I have a st- quick Twister story. My dad took me to see Twister, and within the first two minutes of the movie, a little Yorkie dog oh. is outside, uh-huh. in a, and I said, Dad, we're leaving. And we, I left the theater and didn't finish it. That fucking well, little if dog. if that upset you, you should see Chernobyl, because there's <laughs> a scene with puppies there. Oh, my God. No, no, I'm still so dedicated to puppies. I saw I that was not necessary to be in that show. And we it all was agreed. honestly the only thing thing that mattered i feel like it could have been a very short show that was the most impactful where i was like oh i thought it's sh- bad what happened i to thought you people. did not need that that episode <laughs> it was a whole episode dedicated life. to shooting dogs that, that was the worst thing i've ever seen in my life yeah same it's like the rule also in tv is like don't hurt animals because it makes it like yeah. makes everybody watching uncomfortable oh, well let me tell you what movie not to watch ever in your life is amores peros 
It's oh, a, a yeah. it's a Spanish movie by um, Inaritu, and I made Bobby watch it two weeks ago, and he hates me to this day. He's like, I don't I saw understand. It so long ago. What? Why? That's what the two Why boys right that were in E2 Mama Tambien or just one yeah, of yeah. Those little guys were so cute. That would make Esther look tall. They would. But to, go, going back to Twister. So yeah, just left the movie theater. You never watched the whole thing? No, I was like, Dad, Dad, we have to leave. We have to. I was so scared by the little How dog in a tornado think? whenever Twister Let's came out. out. What if it's like... Can you I find was, out what year Twister was? What I think if I was probably 30? like 10 or I was <laughs> probably 9. <laughs> and you know what's so interesting about Twister? So I looked up the entire... Because that made that was such a I big impact. that movie. It was so good. What's so good about it? Because I don't know what happened after Just as that. a kid. I don't know. Those sort of blockbusters as a kid. We, we probably saw it over Christmas. That's yeah, like, like all like those Christmas movies. Movie. Deep Impact, Armageddon, right. Twister, Apollo 13. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. I, I The greatest movie of all time to this day. What movie? What year was it, uh, George? 1996. I was like, oh, I was, oh, I was 12? I 11, was, 11. I was eight. That was a swing for your dad to take you there. Well, oh, that's my whole. I remember when Land Before Time came out <gasps> at the same time as Jurassic Park, and I got to school on Monday, and all my kid, all the kids were like, "Land Before Time," and I was like, "Oh, my family took me to see Jurassic Park, and I'm scared." Like they never, t I never got to go to kid <laughs> stuff. They were just like, they didn't want to pay a babysitter, so I just went and did all adult stuff. Let me tell and you, that's though, why I'm so cool. And that's why you're repressed as a child forever. Let me tell you, it, it's a good thing you didn't <laughs> watch that. Land Before Time because another thing, like emotionally, like who could handle at that age the death of a fucking cute dinosaur? I know. You know what I, I mean? Know. Why do they have to teach us like this? <laughs> like, so I, our parents I, don't have to. Well, the, eventually they always do Shut teach us the stop. ultimate lesson. About the one death. thing that I remember about Land Before <laughs> by Time by killing us. By I, Esther and I are so obsessed with our parents. Like we can't. Like I, I always say, if my dad was like really loved me, he would just let me die first. Like <laughs> dad, and I know I'm saying this to someone whose dad's dead. <laughs> dead. Oh, you guys, yeah, you're not. You're not even near Dead Daddy's Club. Oh, are, is that like really hard? I'm gonna cry thinking about it. Um, you know what? I will say that I think it's harder to lose a parent um, when you're older than younger. Why? Uh, why? Uh, there's a part of me, and I know this sounds really maybe not fucked up. I While I was devastated, I was very much in the thick of my very selfish teenage years. Yeah. Mm. And I guess like not be as devastated at that time. But when I got a, like now, now it hurts me. Like mm. now I can't look at a picture of my dad or 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 see anything that he's written without having like a full scale meltdown. Yeah. Um, because I'm older now and I feel like I look back, I'm like, I had so many questions for this man. I asked not one, you know, like I wasted my time. Well, that's, I think one of the worst parts about when your dad dies young, right? Because you're not, you aren't prepared. You don't, you haven't had enough life experience to know that you're going to need to know these things from your dad yeah. or that these are things that you're going to want to know. Cause you're, you're in your selfish phase. You're not. Yeah. And you're just surviving, right? Like this was a time when we were kind of still new to America. So where you were just getting by, like we were just like, this is life. This is tragedy. You move on. Mm -hmm. It was very almost like robotic. Um, we didn't really have time to check in with our, how we felt about it because we were, um, we didn't have a lot of money then we were trying to sort out where my mom was going to live. So it was like, and I, I was still trying to, at this time, I was actively trying to still make the Olympic team for the Philippines. So, so cool. it was like, there were too many things <laughs> happening for She's me. She's so much cooler than us. <laughs> Could you even imagine saying she a sentence that. like that? I was actively pursuing the Olympics. <laughs> but I didn't make it, guys. So it doesn't matter. And, and then, so it was just, we were just on survival mode, I think. But 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 now show me one thing that might even even a person that resembles my dad. I was I was reading a Leonard Cohen um, little coffee book table mm -hmm. and there was one picture that Leonard Cohen drew that kind of resembled my dad. And I bawled for three hours. I called my sister. Couldn't get over it. How does she? Similarly. Yeah. Similarly, at that time, too, she was just like, we, we don't have time for tears. We, we got to move. And but now it's it's like just a cry fest. Esther is really going to be the one that needs the most help at, <laughs> later in life, by the way. I mean, not that we didn't think that. But, <laughs> I don't know why I said that like that would be a... Wait, who's going to take care of us when we're old and decrepit? <gasps> Donut? I honestly, I put in so much time with my nieces. Like, I put a lot of FaceTime in with them where I'm like, I better get some ass wipings out of this. Like, <laughs> I talk to them every day. Like, I really actively am in their lives. Well, your guy is younger, so you're actually really set. <laughs> I mean... Do you know that like about I only have once a once a month I just start crying and just for no reason then he like looks at me he's like why are you crying I'm like one day I'm gonna look a lot older than you and that day is 
gonna come very soon. <laughs> That's how I feel about Bobby. He's What? 13 years older than me, but we look the same age, and it pisses me off to no end. No one ever, ever questions our age difference. Everyone's always like, oh yeah, you guys look cute together. I'm like, does he not look like my old, old, old really, really <laughs> old boyfriend? No one ever said. brother, like, like I'm like taking care of my older brother or something. Never, it really, I'm like, well, what the fuck is the point of dating an older guy if he doesn't look older than you? I know, I know. I mean, Dave what's the point look... of dating a younger guy? Because you just are gonna look like an old piece of shit. But then you'll look really badass. Like that friend, what, is it the French president or whatever who's dating like his old yeah, teacher Ma yeah macron yeah you'll be like that woman. wait and then he met her when he was only what like 14 15 and she was in her 30s Dirty what bitch. do guys think of that i wonder like are guys like oh that's so cool i just i love when guys are not creepy about like having to have a younger girl But harry styles is into almost... older girls well we should name them harry styles nick jonas Um, Slatan Ibrahimovic, Gerard Piquet is much younger than Shakira. Okay, someone has really been um, clocking this. I have been for a long time. Too, uh, what's it, Jason Momoa? Jason Momoa. That one I all really the hotties, like. all the hotties. Because Todd is 11 years younger than me. I mean, that is, and I, sometimes That's I cool. just, but sometimes That's in style. it's cool it's in style. until you go back too far. Well, like, yeah, you don't date. A when I started partner. comedy, he was 14 years old. Like started comedy. <laughs> <laughs> Not like became an adult, like started this other career. I know me and Dave, because Dave is 10 years older than me. And sometimes it's like, yeah. It's so I 90s. Was like, I was on stage I know, going, I was going yeah. on stage going, um, I have to date Jewish guys because I'm lactose intolerant and I can't suck dick cheese. Like I was saying jokes <laughs> like that. Ugh. And Todd was like <laughs> skateboarding. Yeah. Like, <laughs> It seems like, by the way, isn't it kind of weird that it's like hot, powerful men that uh -huh. want older women? Because mm -hmm. it's those, it's like insecure men that want like a young little thing. It's it's true. Because look, like Nick our Jonas, boyfriends. Like our boyfriends. <laughs> Nick Jonas has always dated older women. Delta Goodrem, who's like at least 10 years older than her than him. I've really looked that? into this, by the way. Who's she's Delta? a she's an Australian pop star. No, there's a thing. Like Todd likes. I think Todd she's likes married to girls. Priyanka Chopra now, but. Well, Todd, yeah. should we call? Should I call Todd and ask him why he dates older girls? Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> Who are we gonna date when our old husbands die? Are we gonna get back on Raya when we're 60? <laughs> you guys, Todd will be available because I'll have, have died of old age. <laughs> will Todd take care of us as a harem? Yeah, be better. Hello. Hello, my dear. You're on the podcast. I am. <laughs> yes, not your face, so you can continue to look disgusting if you want. Um, <laughs> just kidding. You look very cute. Here, uh, can I talk to him? Esther wants to talk to you, but don't listen to anything she says. No, I'll ask him the questions, unless you want to. No, you can ask, she can ask. Todd. <laughs> Yo. Why are you into older women? I don't think it's that I'm into older women. I'm just into maturity. <laughs> maturity. I'm into, you know. We have eyes for one person. Confidence. I don't think I'm into older women. I think I'm into powerful women. Oh. oh! Did everyone else get a little That's slippy, sloppy, wet in their unders? When he what? Said, Brb, like gonna go I master. Like <laughs> Wait, you said you don't like girls; you like women. Correct. Yeah. So, do you ever worry that, like, about Annie's age? Like, is that ever How a concern? old and disgusting? Are you ever afraid that you're like gonna be cataracts? Like, are you just afraid that one day, like caretaker, you'll be her caretaker, or like she'll just she'll one look? day? What do you think happened with my cluster headache? <laughs> <Henry? laughs> no, I don't worry about that. She lives a way healthier lifestyle than I do. And so. you're you think she's super hot? Are you? Is it like hot to you that she's older than you? I do find it hot. Yeah. Ah! <laughs> fetish. She's fetishizing. So him. is she a fetish? No, it's not a fetish. I don't think. Now and what, what would you be attracted to a girl younger than you or no? I mean, I could be physically attracted to a girl younger than me, but emotionally, on that emotional level, on that spiritual level, I don't. Now you do know Annie is emotionally four. <laughs> D seven. <laughs> on my way out, feeling very old. Okay, thank you, Todd. I'm gonna hand you back off to to. On an emotional and spiritual Annie. level, he's so cute. Oh, he shaved. I thought you were gonna say he shaved because what the the hairs hit your. Special places. Uh, special places. <laughs> Esther, stop trying to see my pussy. <laughs> um, now, what you don't like like young girls because they are stupid and they talk dumb, right? Yeah, they're always like. 
<laughs> I have a feeling Todd is not attracted to me. <laughs> you're old. You're old. You're short. We've got to stop mistaking short for young. Okay. As a society, we really do need to stop. We need to get you stilt shoes so you can be regular. <laughs> I want to get you really tall. Let's get Esther tall shoes. No. But you would be scared to wear them because you'd be afraid you'd fall. I, I'm not going to wear them. 90s Why? platform ones? Okay, 90s platform. Oh, mm -hmm. she's disgusting. <laughs> you just have to put like cool words in and she'll decide she likes it. Buzzwords. Okay, Thanks, bye, well. Todd. You guys, this episode today is sponsored by Blue Chew. Say it with us. Blue, Blue Chew. Chew. Uh. Blue Chew is making waves and bringing more confidence to the bedroom by offering chewable tablets that can help men get stronger and longer lasting erections. Bony bones. <laughs> Blue Chew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis, but in chewable form at a fraction of the cost. Don't be a loner. Fix your boner. Blue <laughs> Chew's tablets help men achieve harder, stronger erections to combat all forms of ED, erectile dysfunction. It's an online prescription service, so no visits to the doctor office, no awkward conversations, and no waiting in line at the pharmacy. And it ships right to your door in a discreet package. The process is super simple. You sign up at bluechew.com, consult with one of their licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, you'll receive your prescription within days. And the best part, it's all done online. Don't like swallowing mm -hmm. pills? No problem here. Blue Chew's Sildenafil and Tadalafil tablets are chewable. Blue Chew's licensed medical providers work with you to find the right ingredients and strength for your pres prescription. Prescription. <laughs> for your prescription. So if you could benefit from extra confidence when it's time to perform, visit bluechew.com for more details and important safety information. And we have a special deal for our listeners. You can try Blue Chew free when you use our promo code BATHGIRLS at checkout. You just pay $5 for shipping. That's bluechew.com. Promo code is BATHGIRLS to receive your first month free. And we thank Blue Chew for sponsoring this podcast. <laughs> Wait, so you were also telling us when you first walked in, you were feeling big, and I wouldn't mind talking about that. No, because you said that you had a conversation with Todd about it. I feel like Todd blew, when he was eating me out, he blew into me. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I could float away right now. No, because of my cluster headaches. Okay, so the month before my cluster headaches, I hurt myself on this row machine. I was so excited that I saw this row machine at the fucking store, and I wanted one, I was like, I was trying to price it out. I was like, how do I, it's too big for my house. How do I do it? And then Whitney literally texted me and was like, Rogan sent me this row machine. I'm not going to come use it. Come try it out. And I was like, I manifested this into my rich friends. Rich friends. Having rich friends. Jim. Wow. wow. So then I, Todd and I were going over and like Randy would run out. She's not even there. So we would just like go and use her gym when she wasn't there. She's in her other house. <laughs> She's renting the other house. Whatever. She could own them all. But um, so I was just going so hard. I like hurt my shoulder doing it. And then um, so I couldn't exercise for like, I don't know, like two or three weeks before I started getting my cluster headaches. But I was like, can't wait. So I was already kind of like sedentary and just like not eating terribly, but like, you know, not active. So then um, I was like, all right, I'm. My shoulder's getting better, but and then I got my cluster headaches. And my cluster headaches are triggered by exercise, so you can't. So when I'm in the cluster headache cycle, I can't exercise at all. But mm -hmm. once how I'm out of the how cycle, convenient. I can exercise. <laughs> I mean, it's when it's taken from you. Like when your toe was broken, weren't you imagining doing exercises? When my toe was broken, it was like I was so depressed. It was horrible that when I couldn't walk. I mean, it was like baby toe on one foot. But um, <laughs> you need all toes. <laughs> you need them all. You might not think it, but you do. Anyways. I mean, if one's removed, it's fine, but you can't have a sore one. Okay, why don't you take one I just don't want see. anyone with nine toes to get upset here. They don't have, no, they're stronger than me. I've broken my baby toe. And what happened? I just splinted it and... Esther actually broke her big toe, but we call it her baby toe. She Aww. was a baby about it. <laughs> Wait, so keep talking. Okay, so because of my cluster headaches, I can't exercise. And then I kind of like get into this, like, you don't, I'm not going to like, diet while I'm in chronic pain. You're you know? in emergency mode. You need to treat yourself. And, I'm, and it's not even just treating, but it's like anything that's going to make me feel good in between these things. And there's certain things I can't eat because they trigger the attacks. But so I couldn't have any like sugars or sweets mm -hmm. or anything like that. But even though if you do if you do research on cluster headaches, it says that uh, like a keto diet is good for it. It mm -hmm. wasn't like my body was craving carbs, like I like bagel, like bread, like carbs, just straight carbs, nothing on the bagel, just like. Craving it. And Ew, then my headaches would actually bagel? feel better. 
What? A dry bagel? Yeah, but that's, but I'm telling you, it was like an animalistic, like, mm. you're a fucking dry bagel, bitch. <laughs> you literally are a dry bagel. <laughs> Is this so dis? How dare you shit on my? I'm a dry bagel with hair. Okay, <laughs> get it right. Like whose hair is this? Ew! <laughs> to pretend you don't see it and eat it. Um. So anyway, so I've been eating like so many carbs, and I know even though it makes me feel better, I just am so heavy. Like I never am like a high carb eater ever in my life. I've never been, but I'm just like pasta and all this stuff. So now I'm nearing the end of my, my cluster cycle but now i'm like enjoying shoving carbs in my <laughs> mouth it's like hard i keep doing the diet starts tomorrow you know yeah. like, oh, no 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 not even diet but just like regular mm -hmm. eating and so last night um i did take an edible which i don't know what this audience knows about me but i'm weed is, i'm not supposed to smoke weed or eat weed weed is not supposed to be for me but i just like to be bad so i've been like eating edibles to go to bed and it's just i just end up like ordering the most amount of food. Like we got pizza really late last night. Give us some details. We ordered pizza, desserts, like desserts. What no. kind? It was just, it was um, cheese pizza. And then we got, I got these cinnamon ball dots or something. From like where? Knots from, there's this pizza place on third that's open till like uh. four in the morning, which is <laughs> horrible. Um, it's in walking distance from someone's house that's not mine. Don't rate me. <laughs> And um, again, again, I know, guys, another one would just be overkill at this point. I think I've gotten my rapings, my ration of rapings. <laughs> but so, um, OK, so I got these cinnamon knots. So they were just like bread balls with cinnamon on them. And you dip them in like an icing sauce. Oh, I oh, oh I got. Are you it. grossed out or I'm, horny? I'm very emotionally turned on, <laughs> dude. When cinnamon things dipped in icing sauce is like I have giving to us the dipping option. Like I get to decide how much. They even ask. <laughs> I have they to give go to you two it. ounces. Listen, they give you two ounces of the cream sauce that you're experiencing between your legs. <laughs> No, of the of the icing, and then you can order for more money, like larger amounts, because people must be like, "This isn't enough," but it was enough. It like, wouldn't have been for me. It would. I, it was. It was rough. Do you I like did. Cinnabon? Yes, I can. It's like a banned food for me because I get too freaky with it. I, I, my mom has like a really big addiction to Cinnabon. One time we were at the Glendale Gallery in the food court. And um, you know how sometimes they put out testers for food? Wait, your mom is a, well, because she works out so much. She probably, her metabolism's probably really high. Yeah, too. she, yeah, she's, she doesn't metabolize anything. Cinnabon Amazing. food testers keep going. So you know how usually they Samples. put little samplers out of there? Of course, yeah. With, and and um, my mom, this is what she did. She's just on autopilot sometimes when it comes to food and when it comes to like free food that someone's order was just on the counter and it wasn't a sampler. Oh, your mom's And good. she just passed by and Ooh. swiped it and just started walking Ooh. away eating the cinnamon. I love this. And the manager was like, excuse me, miss. And she just looked back like just, no bitch, <laughs> like don't, don't steal my joy. And it wasn't until we got in the car that I told her, Ma, do you know why they stopped you? I was like, that wasn't a sampler. And then she was just laughing. Like, we were I love hysterical. That. It's a best case scenario. It's a victimless crime, really. They <laughs> yeah. have to make them again. Yeah. Who gives a shit? What, are you going to be out a lot of money making dough? But it was a whole Cinnabon. She should have oh. known that wasn't the sampler size. Dude, but she she did. I, she might have known deep down, but it's like her body was like, this is what I, it's like when I have the cluster headaches, I need the fucking bagel. One time, my I think I've told you this. One time, my dad and I were at Old Orchard Mall and we went to the Godiva shop. And you know how Godiva chocolates they have the free samples uh -huh. and we were we were looking and they had chocolate covered strawberries and we were like these the, these are the samples today that's crazy <laughs> and there's so many and they're so big and we just fucking went in and then the the, the employee came over and was like these are not samples <laughs> they're like these aren't real food these, these are, are on, these are shellacked for the <laughs> shellacked <laughs> like you owe us 165 dollars <laughs> we, we just got the fuck out of there <laughs> oops I like how you're you're shoving Godiva in your mouth and she's literally diving in the ocean and capturing. <laughs> oh, you guys, I wanted your input on this. Um, I think I might be joining a spear fishing competition. Will you guys go to Arkansas with me? I've yes. never been. Yes. Can we have the? Can we eat the fish? 
Yeah. So there's oh, there's there's striper. Is, I'm no longer vegan. I'm so there's hungry. There's striper and carp. I don't know if you're into uh, those, but they're delicious. Oh, George doesn't say Esther's no. Esther's vegan between the hours of midnight <laughs> and 7 a.m. I think you say <laughs> vegan between the legs. <laughs> There is nothing fishy there. Just icing. Just straight icing. I was going to say, she's she's pescatarian down there because, <laughs> woo, it's a fish filet. Um, I Okay, so I have a memory of my parents. My dad and I do this too. Like we go to the mall and we, that's like our favorite pastime. We mall walk and then we just do mostly laps in the food court. And he has a guy at the cheesesteak place that hates him, like knows him. And he's like, he's convinced that there's a conspiracy against him where he always gives him the small one, which I'm like, just give my dad the big one and then maybe he won't come back for a second one. But we always like take pictures with all of our um, toothpicks at the end. Like that's a sad thing maybe we won't have again. I, the, oh no, that's Do you not guys, coming back. Are you guys um, complainers? If, you, if you're not satisfied with your food, do you tell the manager or the server or no. do you just let it be and I walk away? I used to be, but now I'm not as much. But she I, wants to get married still. She doesn't <laughs> want to be alone. <laughs> I My dad raised me to be vocal about, like, a, like assert your needs. And mm -hmm. Sometimes though I go back on that and I just like take what I've been given and it doesn't feel good. My stepdad is very much like you in that way where it's like, no, if you you're paying for this, if you if it's not up to what you thought, mm -hmm. then you should let someone know. But I'm so anti that, and I'm like, look, everyone's just doing their best. If it's not good, use it as a, as reference and never come back to this restaurant. Right. But that's almost hurting the restaurant, right? So like, as for me, like. Wouldn't you, if you were the restaurant, wouldn't you want to know so that you have the customer come back? I think it doesn't matter, like, if it's a real issue. I just have a feeling that you more often don't like what you get than when you do. The, the no. Meal. Well, I do reorder the same thing over and over again because I do You're have scared. that issue. You have the fear of. But I will tell you this. One time I was at Veggie Look Girl. Look at her little hands. It's so cute. I was at Veggie Girl with Carlos and we got our food and there was a bug in my food and I mm. freaked out. And I'm like, oh my God, like I'm so nervous. And like we gave it back. They, they, you know, they gave us new food. I think they refunded us. And then when we left the restaurant, I noticed that the bugs were coming from my hair. <laughs> <laughs> and it was my problem. There That's was... not an okay story. We have to cut that story. I can't allow the audience Esther, to Esther, why were don't bugs really in your it. hair? I don't, don't know. Really Did you just like brush up against like a tree before you got I don't got know. In? There was just, but the, then there was like three more of them that came out of my hair. <laughs> and this <laughs> is when we found out Esther had crabs. <laughs> Top crabs. <laughs> there is a place on 3rd Street. Again, I do not live there. But um, there's a place on 3rd Street that is called Fairy something. And it's just a head lice store. I don't understand. What? I've never been in. It just is a head lice store. What do they sell? I have no clue. I've never gone into it. I don't think it's... I if think it you're survives wrong. the pandemic, it's called fairy something. I'm going to say something controversial. Lice, having lice is so fun. Why? I had crabs and I loved it. Shut right? up. Right? What? I had crabs in college. I, it was the funniest time. It's mm. when I decided to be a comedian. Why? Because it was, I had joy in it rather than upset. Like telling people I had crabs was so funny. And it was like, I mean, it was gross, but it was Can like, I knew them? it was going to go. Yeah. And I flicked them on. My friend was in town who was an actual prostitute on Craigslist. <laughs> Her and her boyfriend would like pee on each other for money. And I, and she came to my house and I was so pissed I had crabs and she didn't that I flicked them on her. I was like, come here, bitch. And I was like flicking my we, crabs. In on the me. Philippines, what? we call them, well, we call like ticks carapata. <laughs> I I just, carapata. But they're like the red ones that kind of, you know, the, the one before they get like gray and juicy. Have you seen dog ticks? So the little my, ones my, are called carapata. Uh, Todd just took one off Randy yesterday. It was really hot. He did a really good job. He squeezed it. Yeah. Pulled very slight pressure and got the whole thing out of still alive. A because, tick? Because mm -hmm. wait, 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 wait. How did he get a tick? Because dogs, dogs. Yeah, if you walk your dog, go to the park. If or you've whatever. ever like done anything to like exercise your dog, I've never seen a tick on my dog. Do yeah, you, you have to look? You have to like care about your dog. I look at her. I'm always examining her little body. They're not always on the vagina. <laughs> Um, well, um, we have ticks in LA. That's how we you get Lyme disease. Please, Lord, do not give Esther Lyme disease. <laughs> Please, Lord, I will not make it through. I will not survive this. If Esther gets Lyme disease, I will not be able to live another day. The reason lice, having lice is really fun is because you have your whole family now doting on you and brushing your hair with a mm. lice brush. It's cute to see your little teddy bears in it, a bag. Yeah, and then have you ever done this to like a really fat lice to go pop, pop their little body? No. Oh, it's the best. It's like getting a blackhead out that's been there for three months, like a deep pal. 
She anything you did, didn't have in life, she had so hard. It's oh so God, crazy. lice! Oh, tell me I have lice. It's the greatest day. Let me celebrate. My mom says this to me. So randomly, she'll call me, and be like, you know what? I really wish I had lice right now because the feeling, the itch, someone like going through your hair, popping Combing those it little with a tiny little comb. That does sound nice, and it does give me memories of like when the, we, at school you got checked for lice, and they put their plastic gloves on, uh -huh. and they're like uh -huh. touching your head, and I'm just like, mm. they're just spreading. You feel cheeks. special. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Can we do like a cosplay where like one day we all put those gloves on and play with each other's hair? And we actually find lice on you? <laughs> <laughs> well, my brother used to get fleas in his head because our, our childhood dog would like sleep on top of his head and oh. gave him head fleas. <laughs> <laughs> but we were swimmers. I feel like the chlorine should have killed those. Let me tell you, I was a swimmer and I had a whole lot of lice. We were dirty because honestly, like there, you, you know, like the trash family in the neighborhood. We yeah. know that was you. <laughs> I But I didn't realize until I was older because the school I went to, this school, uh, I went to Green Street Friends School. It was a Quaker school and it was in Germantown. And Germantown's like a pretty cool area of Philadelphia. And there was this one like really dirty white family that lived, it was, they were like kind of on our campus. It was just like a really weird, like their house was like, it was like our playground and then their house was right there. And it was like, there was a trash pile in the back. Like they had just like, dirty old things everywhere and the kids would just emerge sometimes we we're so scared of them they were like hills of eyes kids we're like ah we would just run away from them <laughs> they were so scary um but i realized in my neighborhood we were the trash family like we didn't really have like trash on our lawn but like we that's so fun though we were the we were the family to be just the the worst types of people and not know it i love it now like i look yeah. back and i and i do like as much as i like have gone through my issues with my parents and stuff. I'm like, I really was raised very free. I would not be this type of psycho that seems to work sometimes. You know? May I say, having a house near a high school is really fun. Oh, I'm so jealous of that. I would pass by Ours when I would get Ours was elementary school. That's a little risky. Mm, yeah, that's not fun. A high school, because I used to live right by um, Marshall High School in Pasadena. And when I would get off my bus, my 401 on Allen, I would walk past the baseball team um, when they were either scrimmaging or having practice, and it was how I landed like a hot boy. How I old would were just you? make you sure, like, like five minutes before <laughs> I'd get off the bus, I'd have my little compact and I'd make sure my hair was on point, and I'd make sure that you know my, it, uh, it, and it was just a strut every day, a strut. Yes, every day. the strut. Okay, tell me this: uh -huh. when you had a crush on a boy, how did you handle it in middle school? Or in high school, because high school and middle school are the same thing for you. Because you're short. You tell me, because I don't really have a, I don't feel like I have a good answer. Oh, I had moves. I would find, I would know their um, schedule. Like I would have seen, you know, I would stalk the halls to know mm -hmm. where they're going to be. I would make sure I walk by and I would just tell everyone they knew that I had a crush on them. Because I was, it was just this like, I just knew. Were I you could told get them. them you would have a crush on them? I told people around and then I would just be available. Now, were you also a student at the school at the time? <laughs> <laughs> I was the janitor. <laughs> Guys, COVID's been hard. I had to get a new job. The hot janitor has a crush <laughs> on me. The strut involves making sure that your pager is on the right <laughs> side so they can, they see your green Motorola pager so they know you're reachable. Yes. You know? Yeah. And, yeah. No, and, for real. Like you have, you were very like, it just giving that vibe that it's like, you can come get it. And it always worked. Yeah. I think I, by the time that was senior year for me, I had a little bit more confidence then. And so this I was dated. middle school. This was seventh grade. I, I was, dated Sergio. Sergio was a baseball player. He was ooh, also a really good. That's such a good, hot name. Mm hmm He eventually crawled through my window one time and boxed my face because I didn't call him back. What? What's boxed your face? Punched it? Boxed it. <laughs> he punched like a boxer. He punched boxed? my head. Yeah. Um, Did he really? Yeah, because his school was right next to my house. So boxing that's the... your face. I thought that was like he thought you were ugly, so he put a box over <laughs> your head and fucked you. <laughs> like, well, I've had that. Yeah. And so that's the downside of it. Is people that, love like... doing doggy with Esther. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> when um, guys spin you, Esther, do they oh go, my oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> Wee. So it turns out Bobby says he's a spinner. <laughs> oh my God, he is a spinner. <laughs> yeah, he's compact enough to be a spinner. He That's a why spinner. you never have to be threatened by Esther. Two spinners never work. <laughs> you guys, magic spoon. I think I ate four bowls this week for dinner. Separate nights, not one night. 
are you guys not addicted to it? I am. Which one's your favorite? Fruity. Flavor? Of course it's fruity. I'm a classic frosted kind of gal. Peanut butter. You guys are crazy. No, you're, you're all butter. crazy. Fruity. When there's an option for peanut butter, you take it. Lucky for you guys, it comes in a variety pack. So you can have all four and choose and let us know which one of your out of those four is your favorite. It's zero grams of sugar, 13 to 14 grams of protein, and only four grams of net carbs in each serving. It's cereal. It tastes like your favorite cereal that you had growing up, but it's actually good for you. It doesn't have rotten bad things in it. And only 140 calories a serving. It's keto friendly, gluten free, grain free, soy free, low carb, and GMO free. And the best part is they have all of the games that you enjoyed as a kid on the back of the boxes. I did a Mad Libs the other day. And you guys can go to magicspoon.com slash bathgirls to grab a variety pack and try it today. And be sure to use our promo code bathgirls at checkout to save $5 off your order. And Magic Spoon is so confident in their product. It's backed with a 100% happiness guarantee. So if you don't like it for any reason, they'll refund you, no questions asked. So literally, if you trust one of us, you should order it and try it. And if you don't like it, you can get your money back. And if and if anyone was going to send it back to get that money back, it would be Esther. So <laughs> she does like it. <laughs> Remember, get your next delicious bowl of guilt-free cereal at magicspoon.com slash bathgirls and use the code bathgirls to save $5 off. Thank you, Magic Spoon, for sponsoring this episode. It's like Pogs. You need a slammer and a spinner. Pogs. I was so good at Pogs. Thank you for referencing Pogs. You having a religious experience just then. I love you, my Pogs, wherever you are. Did you guys collect the best slammers? Yes. Slammers oh. were the shit. But I really only, there was only like really one year that I was into. Were Pogs only around for one year? Yeah, they came and went pretty quick. Yeah, they did. But the, the perfect slammer was not too heavy and not too light. People thought that the heavier their slammer was the more they could flip and it wasn't that it would really involve technique we what should have they, a pog contest let's Can have a pog we, contest what do you even like now that i'm thinking like what did we do we flipped we flipped them but you Why? have to hit it at an angle and at the right weight for it to flip the whole because you never just wanted one or two pogs you wanted the whole deck to flip and that's when you're a champion i'm very good at pogs i would love you to know what it was all her experience popping lice I got a really good <laughs> great <laughs> motor fine motor She's skills. Very good fine Should we motor call skills. my mom and see if she knows where my pogs are? Yes, please. Oh my god, I hope she threw them out. I want to see this. Mom. Uh-huh. Yeah. Where are my pogs? Your what? My pogs. Do you still have my pogs? What the hell are pogs? <laughs> Mom, explain to your mom what pogs are because they're not easy to explain. You remember my pogs? They were those little circles, like kind of like cardboard with pictures on them. And they came in little cases and they had slammers. They were toys I had. Lots oh, of. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so where are they? Oh, I don't know. Did I you. Right I don't know if we even still have them. I don't know. Why am I going here? Where? <laughs> <laughs> If your dad pulls his finger, his middle finger out of his pocket. I don't know what he has. I got it right here. (laughs) But but seriously, mom, is there any chance the pogs are in the crawl space? Oh, I don't have a clue. Fuck you. We'll show you something. Yeah, get in there. I'll shut the door real quick behind you. All right, well, thanks. Okay, sorry. Bye, miss you. Bye. Um, um, maybe we your should. Your dad ha- is my hero. We have the exact same <laughs> attack on you. Maybe that's why I like you. I know. You're, you're like my daddy. That is so funny. Daddy Annie. Pro- my dad someone would say that exact same thing. They're very similar old dads. Once my dad, um, my mom used to make stained glass and she made this beautiful stained glass for my dad's. Uh, my dad was the treasurer of the University of Pennsylvania. No big deal. <laughs> So why the fuck were you guys raised like trash? It's uh, who you are inside. It makes Esther. no sense. Well, my dad, my dad was just really smart and like Mensa and ended up mm-hmm. like working his way up. But he, my mom was was brought up in like a really nice, like upper middle class place in upstate New York, and my dad popped out of a tuna can. Like I, like <laughs> I swear to God, I'm half white trash, half tuna, and he. <laughs> But he's just so smart. He's like undeniably smart. He just got, he just rose his way up. But anyway, so he, when he retired, he was having all these like emotions about it and stuff. So he had to take this, he had this beautiful like window and he had the stained glass in the window at his office. So he took it home and 
and um you know i'm sure in his head this was like a representation of his like you know aging and life process and everything so it's sitting there and me and my brother just get in a fight like i'm like fuck you max i like throw a brush at him and he ducks and it just cracks one of the panels now it's not hard to fix but when this is like you're like i just retired i'm old like it's a very big deal so my dad is just like livid max and i are crying we're probably 19 we're weeping we're like maybe we're 16 or something because he retired early but we were like we were crying like small children. We were so scared. Our dad was so mad at us. And he was like, I would tell you to go play in traffic, but you'd probably survive. And then I have to take care of you for the rest of your fucking lives. <laughs> it was just so funny. Like, I'll be spoon feeding you. Like, he was just so, he's so like, even in his like fit of rage and like his whole life in front of his eyes, he still has such good jokes. He's just good. Isn't it crazy how like, we would see the like the fear that would overcome my body because i truly believed like my parents or my mom wanted to kill me yeah like that's that's a real thing right like i know that feeling or my like my sister's about to whoop my ass uh-huh oh it's gotta run it's to like imminent on the wall. <laughs> imminent Ooh. danger yeah we were like oh this is how and then your life flashes before your eyes i'm like i want to live more <laughs> Well, mine was like sicker because mine was just like, I want them to love me. Like it wasn't like, I think they're going to kill me. It was like, are they not going to like me? Oh, that's, <laughs> that's so sad. Do you not like me as a person? It's uh, way sadder. Yeah, I'm so on their deck. But should we banana break? I feel yeah, we like should. Let's let yeah, and I break. do want to finish because I do have to tell you guys more of eating story because some funny shit went down the other day. We should make um, our own line of pogs. Yes. As okay. collectibles. By the way, if your mom knew what pogs were, that would be so upsetting. She did after a quick explanation. But yeah, I, I was sad that she didn't know right away. What would you do if she had thrown them out? I think there's a chance she doesn't have them. I feel them. like I'm the only banana connoisseur here. You are. No, give me banana. Oh, by the way, I vomited up some of the grossest foods ever after that fucking last episode. I have a video of me throwing up if you want to add yeah. it in. I felt energized. Oh my God. Thanks. Oh my God. Wait, George, can you play a video on the screen? Yes. It is my favorite video and it is exactly the thing that Kalila just described. Is it described. Chris Medina singing? Oh, no. <laughs> I don't know Kalila that and I had a sidebar that we have to fill you in on. <laughs> Hold on. Sorry from the very beginning. <laughs> Please know that this is this is the the imminent fear that you talked about. Mm -mm. <laughs> oh fuck! Fuck! <laughs> <laughs> the scream. <laughs> when you know it's coming. I was the bigger, like my brother once threw uh, batteries at me. He, I've never seen anyone run for their lives. The only room that had a lock was this one bathroom in our house. And the, my brothers would jet to it and lock themselves in <laughs> because I would fuck them up and I did not care about their balls. My brother didn't go to school one day because I kicked him in the balls. So <laughs> you guys never, wait, did we talk about this last time? You guys were never, you never did burn books, right? No, have oh, you? Oh, I, I never did them. I had them done to me. I found a burn book and flipped through it and was like, oh. I was really, this is how sad and desperate I was when I first moved to the US. I really wanted to see if people even knew who I am, who, who I was in school. Um, and I started a burn book to see even, I would have been happy if they had put me under any of the, even the bad categories of like, you know what I mean? Ugliest nose or Wait, like, well, can you just just explain what a burn book is to you? Because Well, burn book for me is it's not like the typical mean girls one. In mean girls, they just talk, you know, you write your feelings about somebody in school. A burn book for me would be like, you know, like for instance, like shortest legs or worst <laughs> kisser or biggest slut. And they would have categories and then you would write a name on there and then if you agreed with one, you would just put the points. You would just add points to each name. And That's where would you find the book? Um, it would be passed around school, like each person. Biggest but slut is actually like low key, such a big compliment in retrospect, if you think about it, because that probably meant they just thought you were hot. Well, I wanted to have it could have been any category. I just wanted to see my name this and I didn't. So sad. zero. And you I still started don't. it. You should have put your name in it. Well, no, I wanted to see if others were thinking about me, if I was even on anyone's radar. And I but wasn't. I wonder if you had like 
planted something about yourself in it, if yeah. people would have piled on. Why do you probably? Think, why do you think you weren't in it? Because I was new to mm -hmm. America and I was just really like a studious athlete. This is before the That's sucking why I'm like, days. Oh, she works. And then bitch. after that burn book, I was like, no one knows who I am. I better show them who I am, and I started sucking a whole lot of dick. <laughs> Sucked her way right into that burn book. Uh -huh. Then by senior year, I was on every page the of every burn book. The book wasn't the only thing burning. Her pee was as well. <laughs> I um wait that's sorry wait that's a weird position to be in where you're the hot new I, I wasn't hot you weren't hot no 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 I had um really really short hair a whole lot of gums and retainers over those gums and um how did you get rid of because I used to not have a gum I got my gums cut out at 15 because I had braces too young when I was 10 and so my gums got really really swollen and so when I came to America the dentist was like oh like you, we gotta cut some of your gums out really and so they they did I don't know what they did but um, eventually I had teeth again ever since I had Invisalign when I smile I have too much gum now and I'm like Should when I, did you get Invisalign like three years ago hmm. maybe they're just maybe that's swollen not the <laughs> maybe they're just swollen they're not even let me swollen. see you well, maybe you like your teeth and you smile more. Because that's what yeah. happens when you when your teeth get your teeth pushed so back together. Because I had Head gaps, yes. right? No, so my teeth used to be f much more forward. Mm -hmm. So like the gums were back and the teeth were forward. And now everything's... Can we get a before picture of your teeth? On no, 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 no. Can no, I no. show Let's you guys... Uh, um, I'd like to show you guys a picture of, of um, my gums. I would like to see you in high school. Wouldn't it be funny if she just showed us a picture of her vagina? <laughs> my gums. She's like, check you out guys, my gums. That's it's like too a much funny gums? prank. Poor well, I used to always say, do you want to see a picture of my dog to people? And then I would show them just a picture of her vagina. <laughs> that was my move. Whose vagina? My dogs. Oh, God. <laughs> like, do you want to see a picture of my dog? Have you guys, do you guys know, like, you can have, you ever seen those teeth in places where they don't belong? No. In other parts of the body? V vaginal teeth? Like, yeah, they're called like teratomas. Yeah. They're just made out of like random. I'm like, very territorial piece. about my teratoma. <laughs> <laughs> like you, it, it's almost like a mini version of yourself stuck in another part of your body. It can what? be made of teeth, oh, hair. Oh, is that what it is? Yeah. It can look like a little baby human. That's Where? like the little hemorrhoid esters. Where do you see those? Sometimes they're Not just. everyone has them. They're You're, tumors feeling... in random parts of your body. Wait, before we move on, I'd like nipples. to. If your nipples are sensitive, it means there's teeth in them. <laughs> Carry on without me, guys. You guys. I, okay, so my burn book story no, in middle school. No, George. Those are teratomas. Ew. Esther, you have to eat that next episode. <laughs> Ew, look at the toes. Guys, that's why I blur my feet. That's not real. I have teeth toes. Why is that happening? <laughs> I ha I'm not good. I'm not good. Making Esther not good once an episode is a demand, I have. It's a demand. I'm not good. That's really worse good. than you could think. It's getting worse. I'm guys. not good. Really getting worse. Woo! I'm not good. I'd be weird. Do you have to brush your toe teeth? To like go in All right, like, shut the fuck <laughs> up now. You got to floss in between your toe teeth? She's, shut her up. <laughs> She's bad. Nobody can. Many have tried. <laughs> Nobody can. I would have You been. think sticking a dick in my mouth shuts me up? Oh, Boy, are, do you have something to learn? Boy, is her mouth tired. Boy, I would, I, honestly, that's why my voice is so deep because I've never stopped talking. I would give anything to have teeth in my pussy. Anything. Why? So um, I could um, keep them in there <laughs> until his dick gets off. She's a, guys, she's anxious attached. <laughs> she's very scared of abandonment. <laughs> she needs to grip her teeth into your dick. Oh God. I, okay, so the burn book, I get the burn book, okay? I'm like, you know, the hundredth person to get yeah. it. So it's all filled in and stuff. I don't write anything in it because even though I'm like, I am like a born bully, I kicked my twin brother out of the womb, legit. Kicked him <laughs> out. I came out feet first. He was head first, first. Um, born bully, I just, that Quakerism got in me. I just like could not bring myself to write things. Like it's too mean. And so I, but I was assuming like my friends probably didn't. I get to my name and just slut in my best friend's handwriting. <gasps> oh, I was so mad. Wait, my is this Mickey. the best friend? No, 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 it was my friend. It's not the one that stole my mom. It was okay. my friend Mickey from middle school. Cause so we, there's been an ongoing conspiracy regarding um, a mole. And yeah. And so there is. tell us the backstory, okay. Annie. So here's the, we're just gonna Oh my God, that's the picture. I, I think you could have cropped it. You didn't need to. That is a pretty hot picture. When is that picture from? Before my period, obviously. <laughs> it was probably the day before I popped blood. Look at those chi Wow, you guys, I am really impressed with myself in this. 
That's a great Who wouldn't want to steal a mole from this girl? Okay, so backstory. So I have this, I had this friend who, friend of me in high school who I've mentioned, her name's on this podcast is Becky. And she, uh, we had some falling outs. I mean, and this is like, she told the cops I was lying and that my teacher was like, like, these are bad. These are like some serious, serious issues we had. They weren't just regular high school issues. Wait, is this the same um, girl who from stole Mexico your boyfriend, trip. right? Yeah, she stole my boyfriend's. And she also told the cops I was lying when I took my teacher to court. Wow. And yeah. She told, she literally, I went into the, and they said, oh, you're, she said that you are a pathological liar. That's crazy. Isn't that just so fucked up? But anyway, I then did Landmark and decided <laughs> to be friends with her again when I was 19. I was like, wow, I, it must have been my fault she's a cunt. Um, so then I befriended her again. And then we had another falling out where she was, I went to the restaurant she worked at with my mom. And... um she was like serving us and she got mad at me for talking to the table next to us. Where it's like, they were talking to us. It was like not even like a bad. She came over, she's like, Annie, this is fine dining, which by the way, it wasn't. She's like this and pushed me, physically pushed me. And I was just like, okay, I guess. Well, you're not allowed to chit chat um, when it's a fine dining place. We were like in a booth. I'm like, why would a fine dining place have a booth? But whatever, it doesn't matter. It's like, who, I'm sure it was annoying. <laughs> I'm sure that, that's I just the don't story, should... I do I take the other side <laughs> it's just like why would you put pu you pushed me bitch but I also was looking at her like aren't you like don't you feel still feel bad that you said I was a liar to the cops but uh you're pushing now you're physically pushing me but anyway so that I stopped being friends with her but I she's very hard to stalk I love doing a nice stalking on mm -hmm. the internet and she's not this she's, we have in common she's not she's Who not doesn't? around she's not available so I've searched for her, I've searched for her searched for her she finally, she's doing very well for herself, which as I'm happy How so? She, um, she got married to this chef and she owns a restaurant. Her parents were kind of in the restaurant industry. So it's like her thing. And she has a really nice restaurant. Um, I, before, when we became friends again in the landmark era, we went to the same hairdresser. Okay. And when I went to the, when I went to my hairdresser, I said, I think it was her hairdresser first. So I will give her that. But when I saw my hairdresser, she said that that Becky had asked to look like me. No. Yes. No. She became a blonde. She had brown hair. No. She became a blonde and she got the side bangs I had at that time. She had asked to look like me. Okay, so this is important information to know for what uh -huh. I'm about to accuse her of. We were best 14 to whatever restaurants. Like, we were around each other a lot. That is, by the way, I'm already getting visions. Like, this is something I would do. Like, have a best friend and then try to become them. <laughs> yeah, you single white female. Yeah. I've had a few of those. Esther's never, <laughs> never had the. You're not like, someone I become, but you're someone more like I just like, obsess with. I'm not like. I don't want to be you. No offense. You want to be in me? <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> we know. We know Esther. What you want? You want to get up there? She wants to get into that uterine lining. Ew! Um, ew. Ooh, see if there's any teeth. <laughs> um, get in those teeth, pussy teeth. Um, uh, so, okay, so could never really find her. Finally found her on the stuff. So when I Google her, I have to Google her name. I found her husband's last name. So I had to Google her because um, she there was like a photographer that had her name. I mean, I, I dug, it was hard, okay? Right. I found her and was Google imaging her and there's like three pictures, uh -huh. right? All of a sudden... She has a mole, but it's black, okay? It's not mole colored. It's a black mole. Wait, that's what she looks like? Yeah. Zoom. Do you see the mole? It's black and it's flat. Like it's not actually there. She kind of looks like you. I know. Look. She do does see? look like a brunette version of you. But do you see how it looks maybe you, tattooed so on you're or saying, drawn on he, i think she stole my mole i think and i'm gonna go as far as to say i think she's not online because she did me fucking dirty and i know that's narcissistic but i think why like what shady shit are you hiding that you're not online at all wait i have a question annie yeah so you're saying this is what you're saying she never had a mole in i her don't cheek. remember listen i think i would remember if my best friend and i had the same mole this is a very distinct mole i've had my entire life right my cheek. It, you're right because bobby and i have the same broken finger and middle fingernail and that's something that we bonded over <laughs> so, so yes it's something that you cannot miss yeah and somebody but i will say that sun exposure right it could be that sun exposure 
cause this current mole that she has on her face? It looks black, like the same color as her eyebrow pencil. Like it looks colored into me. Or what if she had a pimple and then she just turned it into a mole? There's other pictures. No, come on. There's I used to do that pictures. in high school. I know she I'm obviously copied. I, I there's no there's just not a coincidence here that that is not her copy. But isn't it crazy that I've not seen this girl? A single white But female. I know she thinks about I know I know I'm behind some of this. She Bridget fonded you. Oh right? my god, I'm just imagining putting a fucking heel spike in her eye. So you guys, Are you still it, mad at her? Um, some t- I go back and forth because I'm like, how can I be mad at a 16 year old still? Right. As a grown up, I could do that. But I get very like, like I obviously I am I'm like happy for her. She definitely like is like living her best life. Like this is like her version probably of doing comedy is that she owns this restaurant. She's very like this is her version of high being society. on bloodbath. Yeah. Well, she, no, she's very like she was one of those girls that would like drop a pencil and like pick it up with her like let knees straight and like was always like kind of like uh, like she was just put on and try to get attention and very like she wanted the boys to want her and she not wanted you. the boys to want well they did yeah want her more than me which was very difficult it was very upsetting do we forgive in in bloodbath do we forgive or do we hold grudges i really against try to forgive for bullies. myself like i do think when you're angry and you're mad at people still it does sometimes help you motivate you but for know. me what? I don't know. Sorry, keep going. What, what do you th- what do you think, Esther? Do we forgive or do we hold a grudge against our high school bullies? I I don't know. Like I can't remember figure it out. anyone I know. that ever said anything mean to me. I can't figure it out. I don't know who I hold a grudge against, but I want to. I want to hold a grudge. You honestly liking being <laughs> abused has probably kept you from having a lot of enemies. Yeah, because you I, don't take things personally because you like you know that it's like a. Yeah, I don't. I'm trying to think of a grudge because I know they've been there. You know, my high school ex is a whole thing. Yeah. I'm looking at your face and you a little bit have my same mole. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, does everyone have this mole? And I've just never noticed. Do I have one in that cheek? No, you I don't. do have one, don't you? I have a lot of moles. Let's have Annie mole day and we'll all come in with one. But okay. I'm like, I, like I know how. But okay, you guys in the comment section, please let us yeah. know what you think about this mole conspiracy. If you think someone stole right. Annie's mole. If a mole has been stolen, we should maybe dine in at her restaurant and confront her. And do you also vote for hold grudges or give forgiveness? We, I, I need to be told which one to choose. I'm a forgiver. I got to forgive. I just can't like it's because when I do get like triggered, I, I'll, I'll have this visceral reaction to this girl. And I'm like, how 21 years later mm-hmm. am I still a whole human can drink alcohol in the time that I like? One of my whole boyfriends was created in this time. But it's such an impressionable time where things really feel, um, you feel a lot. Like tiny, small things really make you feel a lot at that age. Like for instance, like I recently forgave the guy, not recently, I've forgiven him for a long time, who told the whole school that like I, you know, that I was a face queen, right? And um, uh, Maybe we should give him a call next week. But he basically was the reason why I was called a slut throughout high school. And um, I just, um, we should call him next week. Let's call, we? can we call the guy, my friend that I gave a blowjob to in high school that was like the worst blowjob I've ever given. We will <laughs> love to rate this blowjob. <laughs> oh, we should call our exes to rate our blowjobs. Is that oh, a new segment? Esther's like, I've, but I've never. I, I, I will, we can call my exes though. would love to. Yeah. I, I will say I love a good grudge. Isn't a, there's nothing more motivating than a good grudge? A good I'm like gr- craving a grudge. As right long now. as but it, are you jealous that I have a black haired version of me? Yeah, that I'm gonna grudge I, with. Oh, I'm gonna go mate with her. She is, I wish you could find her. It's like she's a private on fucking. I'm gonna Instagram. inseminate her. I sperm. I dug though. I dug and I found it. You know what really triggered me though? And this is like it was like a it was a newspaper article about like how people are doing in people in the city are doing in COVID Mm -hmm. or maybe their COVID style or something. And up pops a picture of her like eight months pregnant. And I'm like, so jealous. Is that something that gets you? It never used to, but it's like, it kind of pisses me off. I'm like, okay, you literally like told the cut, you threw me under the bus. You told the cops I was a liar. Like that's such a crazy thing to do to someone. Mm -hmm. I had to come into the school the next day and the only way you got kicked out of my high school was if you threw a punch at someone. So I like had my fist. I walked into her Spanish class and I like started pounding the table in front of her. And she hated the word cunt. And I was like, you're a 
fucking cunt. Like I was just like, I was like, she was, I have nothing to say to you. And I was like, you fucking, oh I'm a liar, God. bitch. Like I just couldn't believe, I was like, what? Are you crazy? And um, the teachers had to like pull me back. And then I got yelled. I remember being like, how the fuck are you yelling at me when this bitch, first of all, you let a teacher jizz on me, you fucking scumbags. And then you fucking all are somehow not on my side coming out with this. And then now you're like acting like this is a victim of me. <laughs> this fucking bitch just told the cops I'm a pathological, a pathological liar. <laughs> I will say, I, I wonder, cause we- I'm still very pissed. We obviously. do keep yeah. referencing- oh, This is a grudge. This, this is a forever cunt. grudge, I think. We do keep referencing the big story. And I do think maybe if you're comfortable soon, and oh my I, gosh, should we have a countdown to my molested story? <laughs> I do think that like, cause you keep referencing yeah. it and I know if I was listening, I'd want to know it. I, I You'd do be know. bottomless. Like, I do. Ah. <laughs> so I do think maybe if you, maybe soon. I can, I can tell the whole story. You'll soon. tell the whole story. But. I go through waves of being like, oh, not I don't now, please. Tell <laughs> please don't tell us now. For the love of God, shut <laughs> up. <laughs> shut your fucking mouth. I'm gonna mouth. bring visual aids. I'm gonna bring some Elmer's glue. <laughs> oh, we have a lot. Look you, behind like, you. It's a glue wall. Oh my God. I'm gonna squirt him. Go. And then he went like this. <laughs> Esther, can I use your knee pit? <laughs> Will you lend me a knee pit? <laughs> we can do an interpretive dance of it. <laughs> Wait, you know, I did that. I've had a boy um, fuck my knee pit. Oh, what? Nobody's really surprised. It doesn't feel good. I'm By like, the way, we're going to try it. We're going to be on wiki feet just from your feet. No, we're episode. not because the camera's not pointing that way. I'll, I don't care. My feet are. Nobody wants these. They do, Esther. You guys, thank you for listening to this chaotic, wild hang <laughs> this is a hang this, this is point. a this is a hang um you guys any uh, announcements from anyone i just feel i i feel very i'm grateful for you guys i would like to see some photos of you guys stealing my mole tag us blood and, bath girls will repost you and if you guys at one point in your life had really really big gums please send your picture no, to me oh. that would make me feel so much better no me after. true okay true yeah, I had um I, I I have amazingly white perfect mouth now, but um I did have bumpy gums. So well, send me your got, bumpy in gum high pictures. School, they they pounded it out. <laughs> I have a clothing line, sleepoverbyester.com. There's some of these still left, maybe. Sleepoverbyester.com, check it out. And I'm coming to Arizona April 29th at eight o'clock at Stand Up Live. You can get tickets on their website. She's there to watch the show. So I will be there in the audience. <laughs> um, I'll see you guys in Phoenix. She'll be your waitress. We'll see you guys next week. <laughs> Bye, guys.